What is going on today, guys? Welcome to uh, episode four of Midnight Sessions. Now, I know what you're thinking. Jay, it's still daylight out. What gives? Well, I'll tell you. We're going to make a drink here, and uh, this is actually just a practice run, so don't you worry. We'll make another one for later. So we're going to keep it simple to start out. First drink, we're going to have an old-fashioned. Uh, old-fashioned is basically a bourbon drink with a splash of simple syrup and a couple dashes of Angostura bitters. What those are, I really don't know, but they make the drink complete. Oh, gotta love it. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, you need a quarter, yeah, you need a quarter of a ounce of simple syrup. Quarter of an ounce, I'm not even gonna measure that. That's like, there you go, quarter ounce, done. Real simple, guys and girls. Angostura bitters, that's the stuff right there. Always have this on hand, it's good for lots of different drinks. Uh, two to three dashes. We're going to go three. We're going to get crazy with it. Uno. Due. Trace. All right. And lastly, the good stuff. Bourbon. Always have some bourbon on hand. Or in my case, you need several bottles on hand. Two ounces bourbon. Oh, I'm sorry. Before the bourbon, we're supposed to swirl this gently. Mix it up. There we go. Boom. <laughs> Two ounces of bourbon. If you go a little heavy on the bourbon, no one's gonna know. No one's the wiser, and it's just as good. So, what did we do last year? Add ice. Doesn't get much easier than that. There you go. Give it a little swish, a little stir. Guys, you want to impress your girl? You know, that's a simple drink. Looks classy, tastes good, it's sweet, so you can let them know it tastes sweet. Mm. Ah. Oh, it's too good. It's like liquid candy. Make an old-fashioned. You will not regret it. Trust me. Now let's get on with the show. What is up, guys? Welcome back. It is now... Just about midnight here on the East Coast, and as promised, I have another drink. Ah, that old fashioned hits the spot. If you didn't make one yet, I suggest you pause the video here. Go make a drink, go fix it up. It takes about a minute or less to do. Come back and join me, we'll hang out. So like the title says, you know, tonight it's no agenda, just kind of hanging out. It's been a few days since I posted, so I thought I'd throw something up there tonight. Um, I like doing these midnight sessions. They're kind of chill, you know, laid back, uh, no real agenda, nothing important to talk about, just kind of chit chat, you know, kind of chill and hang out, and that's all. That's all there is to it. I have Fluff's amp pulled up, the uh, ML Sound Lab amped roots. Sounds pretty good. That sounds really good, actually. <laughs> kind of messing around with some tones here having a little bit of fun chilling out the cat is fast asleep at my feet it does not matter where I stand or sit in this house if I have the guitar in my hand and I'm playing the cat is at my feet it is uncanny but she's a good girl let's try that again Thank you. 
So I am very new to uh, drop tunings. I've never tried anything like this before. Within you know, before the past couple of months, I've never tried it ever. Um, I don't know why. I just wasn't. Uh, I guess I just wasn't enamored with the sound. I don't know. But now it seems to be you know pervasive all across all genres of rock music. So I figured I'd give it a shot, and uh, I'm really liking it, man. I'm really kind of fell in love with it. So. At this point, I've got like four different guitars and different tunings and uh, drop tunings and having a lot of fun with it. Now, of course, that comes with a whole host of other issues like, you know, you need different string gauges. Uh, for some of them, you need to actually have a different nut or have your nut filed out to accommodate the thicker string gauges, stuff like that. Uh, different string tensions. So, you know, stuff I was never familiar with before, but I'm having a lot of fun with it, I have to say. You know, I might be an older guy, but I dig this new stuff that's coming out now. It's pretty cool. You know, I like it. <laughs> I imagine some of my older, more mature uh, subscribers might not be as interested in that kind of music, and that's okay. You know, like what you like. I'm not telling you what you like, what to like, but uh, you know, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I don't know, it's something different. And honestly, I just enjoy variety. I enjoy variety in, in life, in all aspects of life, in all aspects of music, culture, food, whatever, what have you. You know, drinks. You know, change it up. You know, if you're just a Rum and Coke guy, try something else. If you're just a, 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 a Les Paul guy, try something new. If you're just, you know, all you like is tellies. Okay, that's cool. But try something different. You don't know. You might like the feel of a different guitar. You might like the sound of it. Yeah, so over, the, over this past nine months to a year or so, I've been getting into a lot of new stuff. New techniques, new gear, uh, you know, just learning how to use Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro all that stuff. So hopefully my content doesn't come across as too amateurish. I hope it doesn't. I'm really trying my best to kind of level it up, give you guys something interesting. Um, you know, maybe educational, I don't know. But in any, in any event, uh, I hope you enjoy what you see here. And if you do, you know, hit the like button, you know, subscribe. Apparently I still have 96% of my viewers are not subscribed. And, uh, that's too bad. I'd like to see more of you come along to, you know, join the channel and uh, join the conversation. Throw a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you think uh, everything I do sucks, that's fine. That's your opinion. Throw it down there, man. I don't care. You know, flame suits on. Hit me with whatever you got. With that being said, I don't have enough subscribers yet to actually do an honest Q&A session. But I figured maybe I'd answer some of the questions that I would expect to receive if I did that. Just to give you guys a better sense of who I am as a musician, you know, the gear I use, what I, you know, what I'm into, whatever. So, uh, with that being said, you know, let's go right into it. So, uh, what's a common question people get asked? You know, guitar players get asked, especially the really good guitar players, you know, like the Vi's and the Satriani's and the, and the Petrucci's of the world. You know, what pick do you use? Okay, well... First of all, I don't want to compare myself to those people, but just so you understand where I'm coming from, those are the typical questions that you, you would ask a guitar player, you know, just to find out what they use, what works best for them. So for me, I use the uh, Dunlop Jazz 3 XLs, not the regular Jazz 3s. Those things are really tiny, and I have a couple, and I just found that they're way too small for my hand. They're not comfortable. The XL is actually... I don't know if you can see that with this lighting, but it's actually your typical size sized uh, pick. 
you know, it's typical to what you would see with like a regular old fen fashioned Fender pick or something like that. The Jazz 3 comes in two colors, black or red. Uh, the black is called the Stiffo, so I'm assuming it's a little more rigid, a little more stiff than the red one. I think it is. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a 1.38 millimeter, which is pretty much perfect for me. Uh, for a lot of years, I used a Dunlop 1.5 millimeter, and I, I can't remember if it was Tortex or what plastic it was made out of, because I know they use like four or five different compounds or different you know types of plastic. And I really like that pick. Unfortunately, the tip is kind of rounded, and so although you come across the strings a little smoother, I think it's not as a percussive, you know, tight, choppy attack that you would get with this kind of pick. This has a slightly pointier pick, uh, tip rather, and I really like this a lot. Plus the 1.3 mil 1.38 millimeter has a little bit of flex, a little bit of give, so you notice it when you're picking, especially when you're doing faster stuff. I mean. Too thick is just too thick for me. Sometimes, you know, more is too much. And um, two millimeter, way over the top for me. I know people like Petrucci use those. Andy James uses those. But then you have people like Steve Vai and some other people that are like, oh yeah, I use 0.77 millimeters or like one millimeter, which is a lot thinner than this. So it's all personal taste. Um, but yeah, that's what I use. And I'm kind of sticking with these right now. I really enjoy these, so... Jazz 3XLs, the black ones, uh, that's the picks I use. Next uh, question, what kind of strings do you use? Or what gauge strings do you use, or both? Uh, for me, I really kind of fell in love with the Ernie Ball Cobalts. I was using those for a lot of years, well, since they came out a few years ago. Um, <clears throat> and before I was doing the, the drop tunings, everything was just standard tune, right? It was all A440 standard E tuning. I was using 9-42s, to I thought those were like perfect, and I had those on there for a lot of years. But then I found out about 9.5s, and those things are sick, because they're not too thin, they're not too thick, they're just perfect. And if you don't know about 9.5s, there's a few brands out there that are making them now, and uh, they're perfect. They're just what you want, just what you're looking for, because... If you're, unless you're a blues guy and you do really heavy bends, you know, you're doing one and a half uh, step bends, you know, like the Pink Floyd stuff. If you're doing that, you might want a lower gauge string, like a nine or even an eight. I don't know. Uh, or if you have really strong hands. But yeah, nine and a halfs are perfect. So those go nine and a half to 44 instead of 42. I love those for standard tuning. Anything lower than standard tuning, I've got a bunch of different gauges now because I'm all different tunings I'm trying. So I've got tens. I've got ten and a halfs, and I even have elevens. So these on this guitar is uh, currently uh, tuned to C sharp, a uh, drop C sharp rather, and I've got eleven to fifty twos. Now those are a little lighter than what they kind of recommend. I think they recommend like eleven to fifty fours or eleven to fifty six. But again, I still want it to feel kind of like my standard tuned guitars as far as the tension goes. And the string thickness beneath your, you know, beneath your fingers. So I mean, I'm sure it's cool to chug along on a 56 gauge or a 60 gauge on that low E and just, you know, just wail at it, right? But I'm still playing notes on other strings, and I kind of want to have the strings not feel like there's a huge jump from the A to the E. So uh, yeah, 11 to 52s is working out for me. I don't think it's too soft either. I think it's just right. Um, those work great for C sharp, drop C sharp or drop D from what I'm told, and really liking that a lot. Now my seven string guitar, that I have tuned down half step to E flat or whatever, B flat, the low string. So it's a half step down. I think I have 10 to 59s on there, if I'm not mistaken. They're a little light, lighter tension, but uh, you can get away with it. It's not too drastic that it's kind of like going, in, going sharp all the time when you're fretting notes. Um, I think it's pretty good. As far as guitars go, brands, brand-wise, um, I've always really loved the aesthetics of Ibanez guitars, you know, across the line, everything they make. But I'm really in love with the RG, obviously the RG style. But again, over the past year, year and a half or so, I, I began to branch out and try some new stuff. I saw this guitar here in the guitar store, and I tried it, and I just immediately fell in love with the way it looks, the way it feels. 
Uh, the weight of it, it's very solid, and it's a Charvel, and I've never owned a Charvel before. This is one of my DK24s, and it's the hardtail with the hip shot bridge. And this thing is just a solid rock monster. Um, rock lobster. <laughs> no, but this thing is great. And so this is the guitar that most recently got me down, going down the rabbit hole of, you know, the whole gas, the whole gear acquisition syndrome. And ever since then, I kind of can't stop. So, I don't know. My girlfriend puts up with it. But, yeah, I've been buying a lot of guitars over the past year and a half. And uh, I need to slow that down. <laughs> But in any case, this started it all. So, you know, just goes to show you, you might love one type of guitar or one style or what have you or one brand and then you try something else and before you know it, you like two styles or you like a whole bunch of different ones, which is my, in my case, you know, it's kind of a problem. What can you do? You know, you like what you like. You know, try new things. I would recommend it to anybody. I would suggest to you, try something new. If all you play is Les Pauls or all you play are Tellies or Strats, try some, pick something else up just for, just for kicks, just for the hell of it. You know, play it. Feel the thickness of the neck. Feel the, feel the, um, the radius of the neck or, you know, a different scale length, right? I don't currently own any um, Gibson guitars, so I don't have a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. I haven't played it before. I've never tried one yet. Uh, nor have I ever tried like a baritone or, a, you know, 26 and a half inch or 27 inch scale length. I'd like to try it, but, you know, the, they're so long. I kind of, I don't know, kind of want to veer away from the baritone thing. But I definitely would like to try Les Paul. So, you know, that could be in my future. Who knows? Uh, in any event, <clears throat> we're just chilling tonight, guys. Having a drink, maybe two. Who knows? It's Thursday, but let's get the weekend kicked off early. Why not? We're all working from home anyhow. Who cares? They're not going to know. So I would really love to hear from you guys. <clears throat> you know, what do you want to see more of on the channel? What do you want to see less of? Maybe you just want to see less of me. Well, okay. Click over to somebody else. <laughs> I'm not stopping you. No, but seriously. Let's talk, man. I'm really interested to know what gear you use. What, kind, what style of music do you play? Uh, what are your favorite tunings? You know, what, what is the latest technique that you've been working on or that you, you know, feel you've mastered? Uh, what string gauges do you use? I mean, I care about this stuff because we're all part of a community here on YouTube. Yeah, we're kind of all sitting in our houses or what have you, but we can talk, we can chat, you know, and I really want to know what makes you tick. You know, what do you enjoy playing? <laughs> drop tunings like I said this is in C uh, drop C sharp um, it's not too low but it's it's decent but I've never really played drop tunings before so I need to learn a whole lot of stuff so I can you know have a use for it <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, guys, so that's it for me for the night. I'm going to wrap it up. I uh, hope you enjoyed hanging out. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, we'll do this again real soon, okay? Until next time. <laughs>